Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. Yeah. The last yeah. thing I want to see you do is get on stage and whittle a fucking guitar about, you absolute cunt. Welcome to the Drum and Drummer podcast, taking the drum key of humour to rotate the lug of bitterness to tune the batter head of conversation. Do you like that? Yeah. It's like off of. menu. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was listening to off menu because they always do food things. And I thought, how could we do it with drums? And uh, there you go. It's Can best you do it one I more time? Do. Yeah. 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 Got it written down. So it'll be exactly the same. Welcome to the Drum and Drummer podcast, taking the drum key of humor to rotate the lug of bitterness to tune the batter head conversation. Mm. Like it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> but. Yeah, but I, but I, I, I basically carbon copied that from We're using humour to fight our bitterness. Yeah. And tune some drums. Yeah. What was and the batter the one? What was get... the skin one? Oh, just batter head. I thought batter head sounded better than skin because it, it didn't flow as well, if I put, to rotate the lug of bitterness to tune the skin of conversation. Mm. Skin of conversation sounded a bit weird. Like... <laughs> I don't know why, so I thought I'd put batter head. And also, yeah. if you put batter head, then that sort of is a bit of alliteration with bitterness as well. Bitterness to tune the batter head. I thought that was quite yeah. poetic. But That's there good. we go. We're in. That, how long did that take you? What, to write? Yeah. I got to bed about 2 a.m. Half bad. two, something like that. <laughs> good. <laughs> no. How have you been, Georgie? Yeah, good. Tired. Not tired, as in, oh, I've got a lot of gigs, but as in body's worn out okay very self-inflicted um cycled yesterday cycled from my parents house in emsworth to my house in brighton which is nice talk me through uh, the mileage what's the uh, mileage on that 43 miles that's a lot of miles it's a lot of miles and it was a funny bit so i was i got to a bit and some guy goes oh don't go down that track there mate it's you know it's i don't know if there was a tree on it or something i can't remember and um and then I was like, oh, cheers. I was like, oh, do I take that one to go to Brighton? He goes, Brighton? You're going to Brighton? I was in like Chichester at this point. And I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, Jesus, man. Uh, right, Brighton. I reckon you're best to go. And then he turned around <laughs> to the direction I'd come from. You're probably best to go that way, mate. And I was like, oh, yeah. Um, it's all right. I've got Google Maps. I'll I just, I just, I'll show. No, yeah, I'm going that way. Like, I'm this way. <laughs> And he starts always being like, oh, we'll go together if you go on a bike. And I was like, I knew he was wrong. Was he and, on a bike? Yeah, he was on a bike. Oh, right. okay. And uh, he was like, where you come from? I was like, Emsworth. He's like, bloody hell, how long did it take? It's not a lot. It's like 10 miles. It's like an hour. He's like, jeez. I was like, this is totally the wrong guy to ask for directions. Yeah. He was just baffled that anyone was even cycling. So it's like you need a, a, a mount for your phone on your bike. Well, there we go. That's a good, that's a good segue. I then was cycling along going, God, it's getting tiresome taking my phone out of my little pot. I got a little, um, so imagine your bike seat, your saddle. Mm. The, I got a little bag that attaches to the back and you can put sure. stuff in so you can take stuff out while you're mainly like energy gels and stuff like that. You know, Kino shit. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but I put my phone in there, but I can't really take it out while cycling because it's, just dangerous unsafe yeah. yeah so um i was like oh, and i really? know your number one priority while cycling is safety very much so yeah yeah As i it didn't do be. yeah my cycling you do your proficiency. cycling proficiency yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm just gonna say that yeah yeah a primary school i can't remember age nine or ten or something yeah i can't really remember any of it probably I the indicating got penalized for <laughs> When I had to walk the bike across the road, <laughs> I went at a slight angle, which made the journey across the oh. road slightly longer. If wow. You think about triangles and your maths. It's yeah, the yeah. shortest path across the road is perpendicular <laughs> to the pavement. Um, and it marked me down. Yeah. Oh, that's not cool. Bitch. So anyway, I was, I was cycling along. I was like, I need one of those bone mounts. And then I cycled past the Halfords and it was oh. just about close. And I just wandered in. 
And I love how you're li- <laughs> that response is like you're listening to this for the first time, mm-hmm. as if I haven't already told you this whole story. Yeah. But um, but I got I went in, I was like, all right, mate, you got a phone mount, and uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one do you want? And I went for the most expensive because you know. I thought, well, this is an investment. And we were talking about this, is saying sometimes you buy something and it's kind of pricey. And it, what was it you said? It was really good. There's no. You, you buy, value you, in terms you, have, of, you invest in something that is not essential. No. But it improves your life. Yeah. With no monetary return. That was it. Monetary return. Yeah. I'm not you making know, So any when you're money, like, but, yeah, yeah, when you buy drum equipment or when you're buying something that's for your job yeah you know, you're getting good stuff but because you're going to use it to mm. bring help bring in cash yeah. you know yeah improve your equipment or whatever but sometimes yeah you have to just buy these little things that just, just make life a little bit easier yeah and like and then for the rest of the trip i didn't need to i just had my phone there and i could just Perfect. read it like because the they... creator of the bike phone mount yeah. rests easy in his grave exactly I don't know because he, he probably is if he didn't do his cycling proficiency. Well, that's maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I thought, how great would it be if life was always like that? You're walking along and go, do you know what I need? A, and then there's the shop that sells all of it, you know. Mm. You go, oh, man, sock's got a hole in it. And now I'm chafing at the back of my ankle and it's rubbing on my foot and I've got a little cut. If only I had a no- new pair of socks. Hello. Primark or whatever, wherever you were, you could yeah. be on the Downs, you know, and there's a Primark. There. That's a place, not yeah, yeah your that's... mental state. <laughs> I don't even know what the Downs is. People talk about it. They go, oh, I went for a walk up the Downs. South well, downs. I know it is, but it's like, how big is this place? It's just the green bit goes past there. the hill, isn't it? Past the... Is that... <laughs> it's just that exactly. big bit of green till you get to Guildford. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah there's the sea and then the downs and then london that's the way i think it is something like that uh how are you i'm all right yeah it's um just i mean it's crazy it's nearly september mm. uh this might even be out first of september probably first month first of the month pinch punch what is well, it? it will be yeah 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 yeah, yeah. consistency um, and it just feels like august has been pretty insane yeah. So it feels like just been a, what is it, burning the candle at both ends. Mm. Just studio's been uh, really busy, mm. lots of recording work, lots of gigs. Neil, my work wife, has been on holiday yeah. for two weeks in Florida, swanning it up around Florida in Disneyland. So I've had to just, which is great. Good you know, for him. I'm definitely not jealous. Yeah. Um. But it means there's just a little bit more I have to just pick up yeah. while he's away. And of course, he goes in gig season. Uh, yeah. I like to take my Which holidays is kind in of, the off season. Yeah. Um, so, a, I'd say that's almost a flex to be like, do you know what? I'm doing so well. The bit where you all make money and I make money. No, I think it's uh, he has children and his yeah, wife yeah, is yeah. a teacher. So this there is, is no alternative. Yeah. So, you know, it just means I have to pick up a little bit of extra work, sort out. Maybe the gig stuff we manage together, I just have to mm-hmm. take it all a little bit more on. Um, yeah, so just kind of, but I feel like we're now just getting getting to that slight slope down yeah, yeah, yeah. wedding season. Like I've still got a busy September. Um, and oh, freshman year, we've got gig tomorrow mm-hmm. and then two in September. They're mm. all f- over three hours away. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking insane. So there's a lot of logistics to sort for that. But other than that, it just feels like oh, it's just the, the summer season yeah. is just going to cool slightly yeah, 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 yeah. as we go into the absolute barren wasteland that is yeah. October, November. And when it gets to those months, that's when you start doing crazy things like creating a podcast. You know sure. what I mean? You yeah. get so bored. Yeah. You're like, fucking hell. So yeah, there's just been a lot going on, a uh, lot to do. Uh, I got my hands tattooed. Yeah, I saw. It's very cool. Big old cock and balls on the left hand there. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And that was the day before a Mm. run of three gigs. And I booked it in then because I was like, because I'm going to be flush with cash. Sorry, the way you said that, I thought you meant you did three gigs in a day. The day before a run of. 
So no, tattoo sorry, yeah. Wednesday, gig Thursday, gig Friday, gig Saturday. Mm. So I was like, I'll have loads of money. Yeah. Loads of money. But do you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I've had good money so I can afford mm. to pay for this tattoo. But what I kind of forgot about was I'm getting my hand tattooed and then I've got to do three gigs drumming. Yeah. And I shit you not, getting my hand tattooed was incredibly painful <laughs> yeah tattoo is painful yeah it was another level on the hand and i had all around my elbow done as well and it was just Jesus. horrible and i was like i was like okay i've got these three gigs and i had there was some bullshit i had to sort out mm. it's a day out of the office and admin but it's like oh, i'm sat up getting my hands i can there's a few things i can do on my phone email messages mm. so painful i couldn't even concentrate on writing yeah, the message yeah. So I was like, oh, I just can't do anything. And then I had to wear a fucking glove because normally you wrap it in cling film. Oh, yeah. Obviously, because it's your hand, you still need the dexterity, dexterity. of your fingers. Yep. They were like, oh, just wear it. We'll give you a load of like medical gloves and we recommend you chop the fingers off the gloves so you still got your fingers. And I was like, oh. so I had to basically do a few gigs drumming with a fucking black medical glove on my <laughs> left hand. Amazing. And it was all, my hand was all swollen Wow. It was just hot and sweaty, and it was just irritated and and all yeah. that. But uh, yeah, it's not the good, best though. timing. I didn't think about no. that too hard, but no. I was able to pay for it. So, are you sun creaming it? That's crucial. Oh, uh, definitely on my walks to work. I'm popping the old cream on, but I've been using this, this my is little it. cocoa sort of cream. Oh yeah, yeah. What's that then? Well, they said to get something coconut based natural oh cream. yeah yeah so i've yeah. been using that and it's called my little coco i think That's it's for sweet. babies yeah um, so you can just call me coco from now on <laughs> you do um, remind me of coco chanel go on thank you uh give me a, yeah give, do a segue from that i don't know no i, I just don't think know. yeah just been um pretty busy i've got a holiday coming up in october mm. and it's fully now is countdown to lanzarote yeah yeah like five or six weeks away okay mm. i know what i've got coming up in those five or six weeks. Yeah. Nice full diary. The gigs start to chill out a little bit. Let's go. Yep. yep, yep. Let's let's get on that road. Yeah. I hear you. It's nice. Because I had, there was like two weeks where it was pretty mental. And then it's kind of back to like one or two a week gig wise. But I quite like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. This but I don't know. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I don't know if I like it because I know it's like if, you know, I could probably sustain that if I was on a, you know, run of gigs where it was four or five a week until October, I'm sure I'd be fine. You know what I mean? But I think it's when you know, oh, it's coming down and you do relax. Yeah. Go, oh, it's nice. Yeah. That two weeks near was away. It was just like, oh, it's all just ramped up. Mm. Plus I had like four days tracking in a row with three different projects mm. working on an EP that I started in end of July, which I need to sort of get cracking. But it was like, but then the time tracking means I can't do any post-production on the other stuff. Yeah, can't do any admin, but I've got all these gigs coming up. Plus Neil's away, and then this week it's like, okay, it's just eased back down. Yeah, to sort of like busy, but not uncontrollably busy. Mm. So I hear you. Yeah. That's well, good. Speaking of Neil and bands that he manages, manages the five hundred five. There you go. That'll do as a segue. Fair. We last week and maybe the week before spoke about the drummer, the groom. Yes. To play my drums. Yes. So this is a groom who would ask to play drums mm. at a gig you were doing. Mm -hmm. um, he. Where did we leave it? Do I think remember? I yeah. So just a little recap. He got in contact with the agency about playing the drums and basically said, "I can't play drums. I've never been in a band. Never played. Can I play with the band?" And where it was left is you went on an absolute tirade. Oh yeah, I did do that because. Not only did he want to play drums, but he wanted to play your favourite song. Yes. From the set, figure it out. Yeah. And you went on a big swim in anger. <laughs> oh yeah. Before a really good swim. So I think it was to avoid a kind of call. left there. That, yeah. That was the situation that he wanted to play, figure it out, and you were absolutely against it. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to remember. Did I did I talk about when I called him? No, we haven't. No, you've told me, but. 
I, don't I think, think I've, I've got a feeling then I went on my big swim, tried to call him. He didn't pick up. And then we must have done a podcast. And then we did the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So I called him later that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Podcasting. So because I, I, I messaged him, you know, no, he messaged me after I called him and he was like, sorry, mate, can't talk now. I'm with the fiance, we're viewing the venue. Doesn't matter what they were doing. And he was like, I'll call you later. I was like, yeah, cool. And he was like, you ready for a call? And I was like, yeah. And I'd already, I had this plan, right? Because he'd said, he'd said so many mental things, but within that, um, you know, email, the phrases he used, like, oh, is it all right if I play along? You know, you're the drummer. You got to hold it down. And also, you know, I've been playing drums leisurely since I was eight and never played in a, you know, all these different things. I was like, and the last thing was, he was like, I need help with my timing. So I was like, <laughs> So you fucked, mate. Yeah. So basically, I thought, well, what I could do is say he can play Supersonic by Oasis because that's the easiest beat. I can help him, and basically, I'll just I'll be like, I'll be there. I'll help you out. So anyway, it's the evening. He was like, I'm ready for a call. So I called him. Power move number one. Power move number one. Like it. Like it. <laughs> you know, rather On the than front foot. Yeah, exactly. You're in yeah. charge. You're in the driving seat of this conversation's happening now at my will. Yes, exactly. Not when you get a call and you're like, oh, yeah. you're not prepared. You are no. sword this and shield it. drawn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ready for battle. And... I just watched Game of Thrones last night. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so we uh, started the call. First of all, the small talk, obviously. And, uh, you know, he's going, oh, I had a busy day, you know, sort of things. Don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I use that to my advantage later on. You know, it's like, oh, there's all this and that. And then I was like, I, I also moved the conversation onto it. Power move number two. I went, Number two, right. keep counting them. There's so I many said, power moves going on there. <laughs> I said, let's discuss the set tomorrow then. He was like, right, okay. And already... So, okay, could, so this is the day before the gig. This is the, this is the, this is the evening. It was like 8 p.m. Yeah. The day before his wedding. You'd think you'd have other things to worry about. Yeah, exactly. And anyway. um, so we... Uh, I said, I would, you know, I, I can be an affable guy. So I was really being nice. And I was like, look, here's the deal. I said it in a kind way. If you want to do figure it out, it's just going to throw everything about. Cause we use that. You know, I said, we're, we're the entertainment. We're a band. We've crafted this set that goes in this nice little bit at the end where it's like, it's all bang, bang, bang. I was like, we want to put on a good show for everyone there, including you. It will just throw it off, you know. Lie then number all... one. <laughs> yeah. If you're counting and... power moves, they're going to count lies. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, but like we everything. We want to put I... a good show. Eh, false. <laughs> we want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but everything I said, he just instantly ag agreed with. I was like, this is too easy, if anything. And I said, but I thought, I already thought, I don't know if he actually still wants to play drums anymore. So mm. what I'll do, he didn't say it yet, but I was like, I'm starting to get this idea. So what I'll do is be overly like nice and compensating and be like, hey, why don't we do this and that? And I can help you. So I said, so, so I've, got an, I've got an idea. Why don't we play Supersonic? I'll be there the whole time. I'll be by your side, you know, keeping you in time. Make Trump sure you know. Online .com. This is it. Live. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and I was like, it's a simple song. And he was going, oh, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to learn that song. Of course, you, it's, it's 8 p.m. You're getting married tomorrow, you know? And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to, and I could hear it coming. It's like, do you know what? I think maybe I'll just leave it. Just leave it. You guys are the band. I'll just leave it to you. It was near enough what you said. And at that point, I was in. Power new move number three, at least. Wow. I was yeah. going like, I just went in with all the things. I was like, look, I've had it before. I made up a whole story. I said, I had it Line before. number two. Yeah, <laughs> at least. Yeah. I said, there was a drummer who wanted to play at a wedding. And we let him play, you know, but it just, it kind of ruined his evening because he was stressing about the thing and he didn't get to enjoy the band. And I said, you know, you just want to be, I said, it's your wedding day, man. You just want to be enjoying it. You know, it's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, you know, just making all this stuff up about times people have done it and they haven't enjoyed it. And One guy um, did it and then it, he got up on stage and he was so nervous, his trousers <laughs> fell down and he shot yeah. himself and his fian and his wife left him. Yeah, exactly. Then and that his performance was inadequate on the drums. Yeah. And she went, I'm embarrassed. Exactly. Let's get that annulled. Yeah. Straight off the bat. 
<laughs> big mistake exactly yeah. so uh so after that he was but then he was like really like oh thanks so much for all your and i was kind of thinking i kind of knew that he was going to pull out so then i added extra stuff like hey why don't you do this as well and then when he said i don't want to do it get fucked yeah <laughs> so, so he um fine he's paid the money already he is uh but then i got to end with this so he he was you know he was really nice on the day but Josh, Josh, row, row, row your boat gently to the shot. He, um, he told me that while we we're playing figure it out, and I don't know if this was in jest mm-hmm. or not, the groom turned to his mate and said, I could have played this better than him. <gasps> and he saw him, he saw him mouth it. And Josh told me, because we had two gigs. That was on a Thursday. And then we had another gig on the Saturday and it was in Isle of White. And he told me on the ferry going back you Andrews. fucking love the Isle of Wight yeah <laughs> but he was like uh he was like I didn't want to tell you on the night I thought it would annoy you I was like no nah, it hasn't annoyed me but then very quickly it did annoy me I'm like well do you know what we should have done <laughs> I was like <laughs> just went on a wow. round no, should have I should have played it then let him play it the same song and then see but I told I think I can't remember who I told afterwards and they're like he's probably joking but Josh was like he definitely wasn't he was definitely like I should have actually played this because I could have done it way better and I was like, you fucker, because without going on another rant like last week, it was like, I'm sure in his head, when he's got his headphones on and he's playing on his kit, he is Ben Thatcher playing figure it out. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm nailing this. And I was like, you, oh, God. After that, I was like, I wish now I did let him play it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's all done now. But yeah. Wow. That was, that's wrap that up. So that's uh that nice little bow on that. Not to make this episode all about me, but there's something we el- else we have to discuss. The uh, I had a drum lesson. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So student becomes teacher becomes student. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I will say, I almost didn't want to talk about this because I was like, I quite like the idea of it. You know, it's a one-to-one lesson. Just keep it private almost and just be like, I'm slowly learning. But, you know, but anyway... I'm part of a drum podcast and I had a drum lesson. Yeah, we're too far there's, in. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, we're 41 yeah. episodes, yeah. as you said, in. Yeah. You can't be picky <laughs> about what we talk about if there's something <laughs> drum related. Yeah. So, um, question. You go on. What do you want to know? I'll, I'll ping some questions to you. Yeah. All right. Who was the drum lesson with? Pat Garvey. Pat Garvey. Do Who we need to. Pat Garvey. So, Pat Garvey, he, uh, he's the head of drums. For Bim Brighton, when I was there, and still is, the, okay. still is head of drums. Um, he's been there for I don't know how many years now, quite a lot. And um, okay, so but, why did you want to have a drum lesson? Well, I you're was a think, professional so I, drummer, George. Exactly. Why should I learn anything else? I've learned just enough. You've learned Mr. Brightside. I've learned Mr. Brightside. No, genuinely, it was like I was thinking. I haven't had a drum lesson since I was at BIM. And even when you're at BIM, it's not like a one-to-one drum lesson. You know, you're in a class and stuff. You never had one-to-one lessons at BIM? You could do tutorials and stuff. Tutorials. But it was like you could book like 20 minutes with the teacher and then you focus on something. So that is insane that you don't have one-on-one lessons Is that did you have that at yours? Is that that at yours? Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. An hour every week. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, we didn't have that. Thirty of us in a class. And then actually, I think technically, then in your, I think, third and fourth year, you could have an hour and a half a week Mm. if you didn't do a second instrument. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't have that. So basically, I I was thinking... How are you meant to learn if you've not got one-on-one lessons? Well, I don't know. You learn... I mean, you know, it's it's, it's one-on-one to a point. Because everyone moves at a different rate. Everyone yeah, at a different pace. So what if like old knobhead over there can't get that drum feel and you're just sat there waiting? No, no, no. It's not. I'm trying to remember how they even were the lessons. It would be more like... I got a feeling your degree was a crock of shit. <laughs> <laughs> just because I didn't go to the wanky trombone university. <laughs> to the best music conservatoire in the world. Well, that's fact. your words. No, that you is can, true. How can you have a fact? We've that is already... true. That is true. It was in the paper. 
what paper? Portsmouth News. The Times or something. Just overtaken Juilliard. And I even tweeted about it. Take that, Juilliard, you little slugs. Royal College Media. Admittedly, it wasn't the best when I was there. But it's the best yeah. now. But I was all part, I'm part of its history. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Next question. What else um, do you want to know? Okay. So. Why did I want a lesson? So basically, I was thinking, you know, there's many flaws in my playing that I don't even know about. I was just aware that I was like... Were you influenced by... Because we chatted to Woody from Bastille. Mm. If you've not listened, go back. It's very mm. good. They've just been mm. smashing up festival season. Yeah. Haven't they? They have. See the crowds. It's insane. Stam Reading. And victorious. Yeah. Um, didn't get a phone call. Bit rude. I'll have popped down. Who were you expecting a phone call from? Woody. Would to say what? Po- Winter. We were in Pompey. Oh, yeah, come yeah, down, yeah, mate. It's true, Just yeah. come and hang out backstage. Yeah. No, after all we've done for their career, <laughs> absolute stitch up. No, yeah. we love you, Woody. Um, yeah, he said Was that I... he still goes and has drum lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it probably, like, I'd been thinking about it for a while to go and have a lesson with Pat to just basically i don't know i was like there must be so many things within my playing that i'm doing wrong even technique wise or whatever that i need to work on you know every drummer is like you know like if if you get to a point as a musician or anything where you're like nope i'm solid then it's you're you're not going to go anywhere else you know and some people are fine with that some people are like i got these gigs and that's all i do and all the gigs always go well so what why do i yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I was like, I want, I want to go to the next level, you want to get whatever better. that is. Well, it is mental as well because when you going back to the Royal College of Music, sorry to mm. harp on, but you go there thinking you're the shit, yeah, because you're the best in your county or your city or area. You know, you're up there, mm. and then you go and you're like, oh, I'm at, I'm dog shit. Yeah, yeah, compared yeah. to the other people here in the years above. Yeah, and then you know the whole point is then you go off and be a soloist or get in an orchestra or a chamber orchestra or something. Um, but what you then slowly realize is, oh, the people in those jobs are our professors. Mm. It's like, it's incredibly rare you'll get a full, like a full time in inverted commas position, mm. Mm. at least until you're 30. Yeah. So there's at least like eight years, double the length of time of your degree to get to that standard. Oh my God. So do yeah. you know what I mean? It's a fucking yeah, yeah. long journey. So just because you yeah. graduate from university does not not mean you know no. everything about it and at the no. studio me and neil we are constantly still trying to learn new things yeah about mixing you know and stuff. it's like driving so, a car isn't it once you pass your test well it seems that go, way that they going. should we retest the elderly <laughs> i say yes i saw some i saw an old woman reverse on a roundabout the other day oh my god yeah so anyway just to keep it back to because yeah. if anyone's trying to go what happened in this drum lesson Basically, uh, yeah, I was just like, I want to get to the next level of my playing. I know there's things I'll be doing wrong, but I don't know what they are. So who better to go than Pat Garvey? And I I basically, I didn't really have much of a plan as what to ask him. I Where just had all the these lesson? different things. It was, he's got a studio right near Brighton Station, which logistically is amazing. You know, I mean, you think of that. In Brighton. Well, but for anyone, because I think people come from, you know, up and down the country. And I was like, that's just perfect rather than like, you know. Oh, Blacksmith's right next to Hilsey. Yeah. Or Sherborne. Um, anyway, so uh, so but the lesson, it was um I'll get to the technique stuff because that was interesting. So he uh and if he listens to this, it's kind of embarrassing for me to say that, but I was like, he goes, right, let's see you playing then, you know, and he goes, give me hats, snare, kick, just play a beat. I start just playing simplest beat ever. And in my head, I was going, well, this is the worst beat anyone's ever played. You know, I was just yeah, like, this is yeah. the worst. This is the this is the worst thing. I should just yeah. give up now. The groom could have done a better job. Yeah, exactly. Cause, and he's never been in a band. Because <laughs> he's just, you know, he's just sat watching me. And, um, and he's like, right. And then we worked on stuff within beats and... Uh, you know, he's telling me to add stuff and take stuff away. And then we were, I went on to rudiments and he's like, right, give me a paradiddle and speed it up until you basically fail, you know? 
Um, so as soon as you get to the speed where it starts to fail, it's just you're so conscious of your technique and you just it just all falls apart. And even though that's what was meant to happen, I was going, well, you fucking loser. Who do you think you are? Why am I even why am I even drumming anymore? It's fucking ridiculous, you know. But as you were, you know, play until you can't do it anymore. And then we did single stroke roll and we did doubles. And then we did slams, right? Alternating between the right and left. And uh this was the bit that just was crazy. And this was kind of partly what I was saying. I, I needed this guidance was I was playing flams and he goes, right, okay, stop a sec. And then I was like, fuck, what have I done now? You know, and I was expecting him to be like, you should probably stop, give up, just yeah. give up, just get a trade. What are you doing? What's this podcast I hear about? Get, get off that. Um, but he was like, right, play it again. Do your flams. And when I say freeze, you don't move, right? And so I'm doing my flams and he says freeze and I just stop and like my left arm sort of in the air, right arm sort of close to the drum pad. And he goes, look at your left wrist. And obviously, you know, people listening can't see this, but I'll show you basically my left wrist was like, it's hard to explain. It was like bent, if that makes sense. So it wasn't like straight. And he said, if you like, if you do it now, Ben, if you put your arm down by your side, yeah, and then do that, if that makes sense. So basically, for people yeah. listening, my wrist so when push, I'm playing, try and push your little finger to your elbow. What, sorry? Pushing your yeah, yeah, your, exactly. your wrist horizontally, little finger sides towards your arm. Yeah, and it's and if you do that, you can just feel the tension instantly in your forearm. You go. Oh well, that's you know, and yeah. um, and I I told him I said sometimes on gigs I feel like my left wrist starts to hurt after a while, you know, and we were saying it would be partly that, but I would have never noticed that, you know, and um, but just the kind of specificness he went into with my playing was just a stat. Uh, of course it was, you know, it's like he's been the highest level of drum teacher for however many years, and that was exactly what I needed because I was like I know there's things in my playing. That are holding me back and i know those things to get to that next level whatever that is yeah. that i need to work on but yeah but basically i just but I'll, I'll end with this so i um because there was so much we talked about but it was it would take forever it would take a, the whole lesson in length to tell you on the podcast but um he at the end of the lesson he was i said well is there anything you want me to learn for next week or like two weeks time because they're every two weeks and uh anything i can practice and he was like no i think Everything we've talked about is enough. He was like, I'll go away and chew on it, what we've discussed to improve your playing and everything else. He was like, just have a think about it. And I was like, I almost thought like, well, that's nothing then. I haven't got anything to prep for next week. But the next night I had the gig with the groom and stuff, that gig. And I te I never felt like I played worse on a gig because the whole gig, <laughs> I was looking at my left wrist going, fucking loser what are you doing with it and i was really <laughs> aware of it and like everything yeah. he talked about in my playing you know it's sort of like you just turn up and play a gig and you're like oh that's fine everyone was dancing at the end it's fine i got paid blah blah, blah. but it was the first time i really was just looking at every part of how i was playing and thought about what he'd said and i was just thinking this is but that was exactly why i went to it yeah. because i yeah. knew that i was getting complacent and i told him and i was really honest about a lot of stuff i was like I don't really practice unless I got a gig, you know, I was like, I have been complacent. I'm not pushing myself as much and I should be doing more. And so, yeah. And I, you know, you can turn up to gigs and go, yeah, it was fine. Do the same as I did every time. But I was like, I want to turn up and be like, yeah. how can I make this better? And just the fact that I was like, oh, this is fucking shit. I was like, actually, that's good. That's, that means I'm aware, you know, more than I was. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, but, he did ask he was like what do you want do you want to do lessons or do you want just a one-off i was like i want to do lessons i want to even if i have to almost start at the bottom you know like or go backwards and be like let's yeah. relearn but yeah that was uh that was the lesson but I'll, I'll i'll loosely chat about you know what we get up to because if there's any words of wisdom yeah definitely i can pass on um yeah I, a similar thing with um trombone playing and straight away when i started uni they were like well that's wrong you know yeah. change change that change that and the way they described it which was i think really good was the way 
I'm playing the trombone like physically mm. how I'm holding it how I'm stood the position of the mouthpiece on my on my mouth like yeah I can play it and yeah. I can get better and better but with those conditions there's a there's a limit yeah yeah so we need to address all those things that will allow you to go further and like similar to your wrist, it was actually the position of the mouthpiece on my mouth. It was slightly off centre right. yeah. due to when I was younger, I had teeth all over the shop and then I had braces. So it's slightly off centre. But what that means is that the muscles in the sides of your mouth have been for however long it was, 10 years, mm. working harder one side than the other. Right. So you can get to a good level, but yeah. what we need to do is, is recenter the mouthpiece yeah. so that you have an even muscle balance each side and top and bottom of your mouthpiece and you'll go backwards a bit mm. and you'll have to re sort of train it but it will allow you to go further yeah. than you would if you just if you stuck with it and i took that and another lesson they taught me and i think this is similar was they actually wanted to teach us enough so we could teach ourselves yeah and give us and, and they likened it to you you're juggling right mm. Imagine yourself juggling. You've got six balls. Yeah. <laughs> One of them is your posture. One mm. of them is your breathing. Mm. One of them is how you're holding the trombone. One of them is um, uh, how you're, I don't know, just different different things that make up Yeah. playing the trombone or playing the drums or playing the piano. And when something's not going right, you have to think when you're not playing to like your best or you, you something's not quite working. You think of all of those balls you're juggling and you go, mm. I've dropped one of them. Right. I've dropped one of these balls. Can you quickly work out which one you've dropped? Why is it not going right? Okay. Am I holding the slide in the right place? Ah, no, my grip's slightly changed. Right. Well, let's yeah. correct the grip to where I know it's peak grip mm. or like, Oh, I'm slouching actually a bit here. And that's then affected my breathing. So let's re realign the posture. Let's get that sorted. Okay, mm. now I'm breathing better again. Now I've got the support I need to be able to play. So it's going, these are all the things that make me play well. And if something's stopping you, can you work out which ball you've dropped? Yeah. And then fix it. And yeah. you can only know that if you're aware of what those balls are. Yeah. Straight away, your wrist. Yeah. Your wrist. Yeah. So you're going to have to now be really conscious of your wrist and you'll you'll get worse because you'll be thinking about it. Yeah. But then it will be a self right thing and you might re slightly revert, but you go, you'll find where, oh, actually having the wrist straight is, is going to allow you to go further in ability yeah. than it was when it was crooked. Mm. And at some point, now that is a juggling ball. Mm. Why is something not going right? Wrist. Okay, my wrist is starting to tweak. Yeah. Let's straighten that out. Bosh, you're back in the game. Yeah. You know, and it will be, are you sitting upright? Are you doing yeah. all the, you know, positioning? And that's sometimes all it is. And that's probably why he's not giving you anything to work on. Yeah. Is that, well, that's what that, he said. That, that, giving you more than enough. Yeah. Sort in, think about your wrist. Yeah. Yeah. More than enough. Yeah. Because now you're going to think about that forever. Yeah, exactly. That is now a self-writing juggling ball. Yeah. And that's the episode title. Right there. But that's great you've gone for a lesson, man. That's that's yeah. Well, just, yeah. Just because you're earning a career playing drums, there's absolutely no reason why. Doesn't mean any. Well, yeah, doesn't well, mean the... you know everything, and it doesn't mean if, why you know why you but... can't go carry on going for lessons. No, my God. If anything, you should be doing it more. If you know, if it's your career, you know what I mean. It's like um, to stay in check with what you're doing. Yeah. You know, the fact Cars that have MOTs. Said... <laughs> The fact that Woody said he goes to Pat for a tune-up, I thought was great. You know, just the idea of he, you know, yeah, he's because going to go on habits tour. just slip in, yeah, over there, the time exactly. because you're busy, so busy playing, you don't do any practice and any have any chance to sort those things out. Exactly. Just go check up. Oh no, you're sitting too far, too far down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Sort that <laughs> yeah, out. Bosh. Exactly. Okay, we're back in. What yeah. are the? And I just I think the juggling ball thing is good. Yeah. What ball have I dropped? That one. Pop it back in. Okay, we're rolling. Let's go. Exactly. But yeah. Nice one. But yeah, that's uh, good you're having them regularly and then we can uh, feed in because there's definitely yeah. be interesting stuff. 
Yeah. Well, I would say but last. You didn't cry, did you? I didn't cry, but I was. I would say what's good, you know, is teaching is 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 very good at because I thought about when I was teaching people, and I could be overly like, brilliant, mate. That's fucking fantastic. I didn't say fucking to you know primary school kids, but he's very good at being like you don't get much, but it's but that's what you want from a teacher. Because if I walked in, Pat mused. <laughs> if I walked in and he went, Nah, man. Sounds all good to me. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which obviously would never have happened. But um, but it, really you know. on his phone smoking. Yeah. Sounds all good to me, mate. <laughs> I don't know what you're yeah. worried about. No, if I, you say you got a wedding gig this week. <laughs> no, why? Why are you? Sounds like you're killing it. Um, but yeah. Anyway, should we? Um, oh, well, have we got any Tom of the Week or Drum Dumpster? Uh, Just cautious of time. Yeah, let's save it for next week. Yeah, let's save it for next save week. week. I've definitely got one. What a time of the week! Yes, <laughs> but we'll save it. We'll save it. Well, yeah, I hope you can all hold on for next week. Yes, yeah. hold on, hold on. Yeah, nice that was one. good. That yeah, was good. Enjoy the rest of your week. It's yep. nearly the weekend. Yep, it's nearly September. It is hmm. September. It's nearly insane electricity prices. Oh yeah, look forward Yay. to that. Cool. Oh, boy. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>